So we've made a good start on understanding musculoskeletal geometry. We talked about the motivation, the definition of a moment and moment arm, done 2D and 3D examples, and talked about how to measure moment arms from MRI or tendon excursion or other methods. Now I'd like to show you some specific examples where these come into play. The first is for a surgical procedure called a tendon transfer surgery. And the second way we use moment arms is to study muscle tendon velocities during sprinting and how that might lead to a hamstring injuries. So let's take the surgical example first. The application I'll talk about is a tendon transfer surgery. There are many, many types of tendon transfer surgeries. I'll describe one so that you know what they are and then talk about how we might analyze the geometry in generic terms that would apply to many tendon transfers. So the one I'd like to talk about is a rectus femoris transfer that's done to improve stiff knee gait. What I'm showing here is an MRI of a thigh. The red muscles are the quadriceps muscles. So we're looking at the thigh. The blue muscle is rectus femoris. So it starts up here on the pelvis and runs down to the kneecap. Now, a spastic rectus femoris, one that's active too strongly and at the wrong times, is thought to cause a gait abnormality called stiff knee gait. And stiff knee gait is uh, shown here. So here's the knee flexion angle versus percentage of gait cycle. And here's normal. You flex your knee a little bit, and then you flex your knee a lot during the swing phase of gait. In stiff knee gait, usually you're a little bit crouched, so you're flexing a little bit more. And then during the swing phase, you don't flex much at all. And it's a problematic gait because it leads to tripping and falling. It's energetically inefficient. Frequently, if your knees, we need to bend our knees so that our toe doesn't hit the ground. And if our knees don't bend, you might need to circumduct your hip to get around. So stiff knee gait is problematic. It's sometimes thought to be caused by this hyperactive rectus femoris muscle that is on during the swing phase of gait or even before the swing phase. So in this surgery, the muscle is detached from the patella. Remember, it's coming down and attaching to the kneecap. But here now, it's detached from the patella and rerouted. So you can imagine it can be detached here. You free up the muscle, and you can reroute it and attach it to, say, one of the hamstring muscles. And that's what's shown here. So we did some MRI studies. So here's the person. Um, on their non-operated side, and here they are after surgery. So here's the green is the sartorius muscle, and blue, normally it would be coming down and attaching to the kneecap, but it's now sewn into the sartorius muscle, and here's a different view. So we're taking a muscle that crosses in front of the hip and generates a hip flexion moment, and crosses in front of the knee, it's one of the quadriceps, and generates a knee extension moment, and hooking it to a muscle that crosses behind the knee. So now it should generate a hip flexion moment and a knee flexion moment. Well, that's going to change how the muscle operates. It's going to change its moment arms. It's going to change its lengths. It's going to change its velocities. And therefore, it's going to change the forces it can generate. Remember, muscle force depends not only on its excitation, but on its length and velocity as well. So let's analyze if how this muscle function is changed. Let's take a generic example of a tendon transfer. Let's say we have a donor muscle that uh, we're going to uh, show is here. We've taken this muscle from another location. Maybe it's a redundant muscle that has another adjacent muscle that does about the same thing. And we can attach it to one of two places. This donor muscle has the following properties. It has a peak force generating capacity of 1,200 newtons, and it has an optimal fiber length of 6 centimeters. So we've just drawn its force length curve, right? It's going to peak at 1,200 newtons, and it's going to have a range of length of about 6 centimeters. And we can attach it between two locations, the blue location that we're going to attach down to muscle A has a moment arm of 3 centimeter. The green location has a moment arm that's bigger, about 6 centimeters, so it's double. 
So where should we attach this red muscle? Should we sew it into this tendon or sew it into this tendon? So one thing you can think about quickly is that if you sew it into the location with the bigger moment arm, you're going to get a bigger moment. The moment arm's bigger, so for a given amount of force, you'll get a, you'll get a bigger moment. That may or may not be the best thing. Remember, it's also going to change length more. Muscles with bigger moment arms undergo a greater change in length with joint angle, so it may or may not do the job. Now, let's say there are some requirements. Let's say after the surgery, the muscle needs to produce 10 newton meters over a 60 degree range of motion to restore the desired function. What do I mean by that? Let's say I'm going to do a, a tendon transfer at my elbow because my elbow flexors are paralyzed. I'm taking one muscle, one of the heads of the triceps, for example, I'm going to transfer it over to produce a, a flexor. And in order for that to work, I need to get a drink from a table to my mouth, about 60 degrees range of motion, and I need to generate of that whole range about 10 newton meters. So I can lift my arm and uh, get the right range of motion so I can reach my mouth. Let's say I've had a paralysis and all of these flexors are paralyzed and I need to restore that function. So what would be better, site A or site B? Let's go through an analysis. So here's how I think about this. The requirements are 10 Newton meters over a 60 degree range of motion. Conveniently, I've said 60 degrees here because that's one radian, so it'll make the calculations a little bit simpler. Will attaching to muscle A do the job? Let's do the analysis. So here is a generic muscle force length curve. What I'm plotting here is muscle force versus muscle length so you see not the nice, beautiful, smooth force length curve, but a, a one that's just linear like this. And what we see, we can make a rough approximation that the muscle can generate active force, peak force at its optimal length, and it will generate active force from about half of its optimal length to about 1.5 of its optimal fiber length. So that's a generic muscle force length curve. But remember, we knew something about our donor muscle. It has these properties. It has a peak force of 1,200 newtons and a uh, optimal fiber length of 6 centimeters. So now I can draw the force length curve for that muscle. Its peak force is 1,200 newtons, and it's generating force from 3 centimeters to 9 centimeters. So that's its force length curve. Now let's say we attach it to a certain location. Let's say we attach it to muscle A. Now remember muscle A had that three centimeter moment arm. And let's say it's constant. We need 60 degrees range of motion. That's one radian. So the total change in length, if we attach to muscle A, is going to be three centimeters. So my D DL, is three centimeters because the moment arm was three centimeters and we're going through one radian. So this moment arm is equal to delta L over delta theta. We get the three centimeters here. So let's overlay that change in length on our force length curve. That's shown in blue here. So we've assumed that the surgeon can tension this muscle just right so that it's centered on the force length curve. So what's the minimum force we get out of this. The minimum force is about 600 newtons. Other than that, we get more than 600 newtons. Now let's check it out to see if it meets our needs. So the force minimum times the moment arm is going to be this 3 centimeter moment arm, so it's 0 0.03 meters, times 600 newtons, that's 18 Newton meters. Pretty good. We'll get at least 18 Newton meters over this whole 60 degree range of motion. Remember, we only needed 10 Newton meters over the 60 degree range of motion. So at donor site one, yes, it does the job. The minimum is 18. All we need is 10. Check. That would be a great surgery to do. Let's try the other site. Remember, we were going to get a big moment there. So if we attach 
where the muscle has the large moment arm, the six centimeter moment arm, over that 60 degree range of motion, we are going to traverse this whole force length curve. So there's going to be certain parts of the range of motion where the force is zero. So where that force is zero, you're not going to be able to generate any movement. Because the moment arm's bigger, as I go through the range of motion, the muscle gets shorter and shorter, and it gets so short that on the muscle force length curve, it can't generate any force. It's tempting to go for those big moment arms because you'll get a big torque out of the muscle. But the downside is they undergo a greater change in length. And you see in this case, if we attach to this muscle, the minimum moment is zero. This moment of zero is not 10 Newton meters. So attaching to muscle B will not do the job. These kind of analyses of how the moment arm of a muscle after a tendon transfer can be done all over the body. There are tendon transfers that are done in the finger, in the wrist, in the elbow, in the lower extremities. And an analysis like this needs to be done to design the, the right donor muscle, the right requirements, and the right moment arms. So hopefully that's helpful for you to think about musculoskeletal geometry. Just a quick story, I took a friend in for a hand surgery and the resident came out and he had just finished the operation with the attending surgeon. And he said, I wanted to tell you that I think about your moment arms and that lecture every day as I design tendon transfers in the upper extremity. So if you ever become a surgeon, it can be really valuable. Even if you're not a surgeon, it can be a valuable way to think about muscles and musculoskeletal geometry. So let's go on to another example.